Welcome to the last session of UGBS 208, Introduction to Financial Accounting, Session 9. This is about Introduction to International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS. As accountants, it's important to pay attention to the current standards that most countries have adopted and using so far across the world. Over the years, accounting standards have varied across countries, but globalization and the drive to make accounting information comparable and comprehensible across borders have facilitated the emergence of a common set of international financial reporting standards. So this session seeks to bring our attention to this standard and the need for accountants to acquaint themselves and appreciate it and work with them as they go on with their training. So by the end of this session, we'll be able to identify the objectives of international financial reporting standards, identify the benefits of adopting international financial reporting standards, and examine the challenges of adopting international financial reporting standards in developing countries such as ours. Mafu Yadom Asante Taki and the appendices of Warren, Ravi and Ducha will be the main reading list for this particular session. International Financial Reporting Standard, simply known as IFRS. What is it? IFRS is a collection of financial reporting standards developed by the International Accounting Standards Board, that is the IASB, an independent international standard setting organization. The aim of this IFRS is to provide a single set of high quality global accounting standards that require transparent and comparable information in general purpose financial statements. The structure of the IFRS, simply the IFRS came to meet the IASB, so it took over it. So the International Accounting Standards, written by the International Accounting Standards Committee, as amended by the International Accounting Standards Board, is part of the IFRS, same as the IFRS itself, which is the International Financial Reporting Standards, and then the Standards Interpretations Committee, they interpret the various standards and helps to give meaning and understanding to various standards that are issued by the board and the IFRIC in that perspective. The IFRS are considered a principle based set of standards, unlike the US GAAP, which is not which is a rule based, but IFRS is a principle based set of standard that they establish broad principles as well as dictate specific treatment. So within the broad principles, members or accountants using it are liberty to pick and choose out of the principles which one best suit what they are doing. Now let's try and understand the whole structure and how these standards are formulated and the body in charge. The International Accounting Standards Board, simply known as the ISB, is the main body that sets these standards. But they, they are appointed and governed by a trustee, which saying that the whole IFRS Foundation, the trustee is in charge. For the trustees' work to go on very well and to be accountable to the public, that whatever they are doing is for public interest, there is also the monitoring board, which approves and oversees the activities of the trustee. For the standards to also come out, that is the standard, the IFRS, the 41 or the IFRS for SMEs, SMEs, for it to come out, there is a need for an advisory council that advises the board that comes out with the standard on some of the things or some of the issues that they need to pay attention to so that the standard will be a complete set of standard covering all possible issues. There is also the IFRS Interpretation Committee 
they are in to interpret what comes out of the standard. So the standard, the four IFRS or the IFRS for SME, they may have issues. People may give different interpretations as to what the standard purports to say. It is the work of this IFRS interpretation committee to make things clearer for all practitioners and for all interested party. So this makes up for the entire governing body for the IFRS Foundation and how standards are issued. So the IFRS is issued by the International Accounting Standards Board, but the International Accounting Standards Board is not a body on its own. It is governed by the trustee. The trustee has a monitoring board that also checks the activities of the trustee to make sure that they are accountable and they are aimed for public interest. We have the advisory board as well and the interpretations committee to see to it that the work done by the board, the IASB, is according to what the global world is expecting. By the end of 2015, these are some of the IFRS standards that have been issued. These are not exhaustive. It includes a lot of other IAS. So with a link here, you can assess most or all the IFRS that have been issued and in practice so far at this stage. Why IFRS at all? Why should a country like Ghana bother itself with IFRS? Because of the importance and essential benefit countries will get when they attach themselves or when they adopt IFRS and use IFRS standard instead of their local standard. And some of the reasons are these. Investors are acting on a global market. You are in Ghana, you have a big organization in Ghana, you need more funds to advance it. Ghanaians alone cannot do that for you. The investor out there also wants to understand your financial account, financial statement, but you are preparing it in your own standards. That investor is not interested in that. He's interested in a standard that is globally accepted, and IFRS gives that platform. National standards don't work on global markets, so it is expedient for a country like Ghana to hook on to this globally accepted accounting standards. Cross-border business is hindered by national standards. So even in Ghana, we struggle to do certain businesses with other companies in Togo, Burkina, Cote d'Ivoire, those even closer because of national standards. They have their own rules, we have our own, and that will cause a lot of hindrance for business growth. But with IFRS, a common accounting standard across the board, it will take such barriers out, out it will make doing business across country so easy and simple. In Ghana, the two main IFRS have been adopted already, the four IFRS and IFRS for SME. The four IFRS adopted in 207 for listed firms on Ghana Stock Exchange, even though a full implementation of it was in 208, but for banks and insurance companies as well, that is for unlisted firms. But for IFRS for SMEs, it is from July 2009, and it's mainly for organizations that are classified as what? SMEs. So if you are not a listed company, and you are, you are not in banking or insurance, then yours is to go with the IFRS for SME. That is when you know you are an SME. But if you are not an SME and you have the capacity to adopt the full IFRS, it's allowed since Ghana has adopted the full IFRS and IFRS for SME. Now let's look at some of the benefits IFRS adoption provides for our capital market, the Ghana Stock Exchange. Credibility of local market to foreign investors. Investors out there will feel fine, very open to invest in listed companies in Ghana. Why? Because their accounts are prepared on a globally accepted accounting standards, not on Ghana national accounting standards, but rather on IFRS. So it gives credibility to the accounts prepared by these listed firms. So investors are attracted to it. More cross-border investment. Wherever the person is, 
he cares less because he knows and understands your financial because it has been prepared based on a standard he or she that is the investor also appreciates and understands and values efficient capital allocation comparability across political boundaries and it also facilitates global education and training why because they are new and across world wherever you learn it so far as you move to another country that uses it you are okay and you can easily practice your accountancy in that particular country so for us they are on ifrs benefits to specific companies lower cost of capital why because your accounts have been accepted so it will make invested accept any cost of capital you agree on but if your accounts are prepared on your own national standards then investors are skeptical and therefore may want to benefit when they invest in you and therefore will be charging higher costs on the capital they are providing you also it facilitates raising capital abroad if you deal with ifrs it is expected that wherever an investor is he or she can invest in your organization it also enables integrated it systems ifrs encourages that every aspect of the organizations are linked so that a proper financial reports can be generated based on a standard one set of books and easier consolidation of account if a company is in ghana subsidiaries all over the world there is no need to also incur extra costs in consolidating because all the accounts all over the world us uk wherever have been prepared based on one particular standard so it will be easier to consolidate the financial report better understanding of financial statement from business partners abroad but notwithstanding all these benefits adopting ifrs has its own challenges especially to developing nations like ours ghana one key challenge is the lack of commitment by leaders adopting ifrs comes with costs at the initial stages and requires a lot of structural changes and if leaders are not committed it will be very difficult to achieve such a goal lack of laws or regulations to enforce compliance ghana may have adopted ifrs but what are the laws enforcing the full implementation and compliance of the standard unlike the firms listed on the ghana stock exchange which are mandated others are not and they are being encouraged to i dare say this ghana is now encouraging them to use the ifrs for sme but for smes that want to list on the alternative stock exchange there too the capital market is finding a way to enforce the adoption and full compliance of the ifrs standard be it the four or the is ifrs for sme minimum stakeholders involvement others are not so interested to make sure it works and with such is a major challenge in developing countries because those involved those that can push it to for it to succeed are not doing enough to see the success of the implementation of ifrs adoption so it is really hindering other organization to roll it fully as the accounting standards that has been adopted and in practice in our country lack of solid financial systems will also impede a successful implementation and adoption of ifrs inadequate training and costs implementation comes with a lot of costs and a lot of training so if leaders are not so committed to it then they will not be willing to pay such huge amount for training a staff in order to be able to implement the standard in full divergence between local gap and ifrs because the practitioners have been using the previous or the national accounting standards for e years it's not so easy for them to change over time to these new standards 
tax neutrality issues identify as a key in many countries because the companies want to adopt things that will have implications on their tax, possibly reduce their tax burden. So if they are not seeing that, it's a bit difficult for leaders to commit themselves to the adoption of IFRS. Now let's try and turn our attention to class activity on this particular session, which is also our last session. I hope any questions or any difficulty you have on this, you will not hesitate. You will contact us on our Sakai platform for us to deliberate more on this so that we better appreciate them. But don't forget to turn attention to assignment nine, go through it and test yourself whether you've appreciated what we've discussed so far. And thank you and have a wonderful semester.